what Mr. Cohen has to say. But the American people have a right to hear him. So we're going to proceed. The American people can judge his credibility for themselves. Now, Mr. Chairman? Yes. We did not say that. We just said we wanted to follow the rules. We had, he didn't say stop the hearing. He just said postpone it so we could get his testimony and the exhibits when we were supposed to get them according to the rules of this committee. That's all we said. We didn't say we didn't want to hear from the guy. We Reclaiming just said we wanted to follow the rules. Reclaiming my time. I now recognize myself for five minutes to give an opening statement. Today, the committee will hear the testimony of Michael Cohen, President Donald Trump's longtime personal attorney and one of his closest and most trusted advisors over the last decade. On August 21st, Mr. Cohen appeared in federal court and admitted to arranging secret payoffs of hundreds of thousands of dollars on the eve of the election to silence women alleging affairs with Donald Trump. Mr. Cohen admitted to violating campaign finance laws and other laws. He admitted to committing these felonies, quote, in coordination with and at the direction of, unquote, President Trump. And he admitted, he admitted to lying about his actions to protect the president. Some will certainly ask if Mr. Cohen was lying then, why should we believe him now? Good question. This is a legitimate question. As a trial lawyer for many years, I've faced this situation over and over again, and I ask the same question. Here is how I view our role. Every one of us in this room has a duty to serve as an independent check on the executive branch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in search of the truth. The president has made many statements of his own and now the American people have a right to hear the other side. They can watch Mr. Cohen's testimony and make their own judgment. We received a copy of Mr. Cohen's written statement late last night. It includes not only personal eyewitness accounts of meetings with Donald Trump as president inside the Oval Office, but it also includes documents and other corroborating evidence for some of Mr. Cohen's statements. For example, Mr. Cohen has provided a copy of a check sent while President Trump was in office with Donald Trump's signature on it to reimburse Mr. Cohen for the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. This, is new, this new evidence raises a, a, a host of troubling legal and ethical concerns about the president's actions in the White House and before. Would you all close that door, please? Thank you. This check is dated August 1st, 2017. Six months later, in April of 2018, the president denied anything about it. In April of 2018, President Trump was flying on air, Air Force One, when a reporter asked him the question, did you know about a $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels? The answer was, quote, no. A month after that, the president admitted to making payments to Mr. Cohen, but claimed they were part of a, quote, a monthly retainer, unquote, for legal services. This claim fell apart in August when federal prosecutors concluded, and I quote, 
in truth and in fact, there was no such retainer agreement, end of quote. Today, we, we will also hear Mr. Cohen's account of a meeting in 2016 in Donald Trump's office during which Roger Stone said over speakerphone that he had just spoken with Julian Assange, who said there would be a, quote, massive dump of emails that would damage Hillary Clinton's campaign, end of quote. According to Cohen, Mr. Trump replied, quote, wouldn't that be great, end of quote. The testimony that Michael Cohen will provide today, ladies and gentlemen, is deeply disturbing, disturbing and it should be troubling to all Americans. We, we will all have to make our own evaluation of the evidence and Mr. Cohen's credibility. As he admits, he has repeatedly lied in the past. I agree with Ranking Member Jordan that this is an important factor we need to weigh, but we must weigh it and we must hear from him. But where I disagree fundamentally with the ranking member involves his efforts to prevent the American people from hearing from Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen's testimony raises grave questions about the legality of Donald Trump's, President Donald Trump's conduct and the truthfulness of statements while he was president. We need to assess and investigate this new evidence as we uphold our constitutional, constitutional our oversight responsibilities. And we will continue after today to gather more documents and testimony in our search for the truth. I have made it abundantly clear to Mr. Cohen that if he comes here today and he does not tell him the truth, tell us the truth, I will be the first one to refer that un those untruthful statements to DOJ. So when people say he, he doesn't have anything to lose, he does have a lot to lose if he lies. And the American people, by the way, voted for accountability in November. And they have a right to hear Mr. Cohen in public so they can make their own judgments. Mr. Cohen's testimony is the beginning of the process not the end. Ladies and gentlemen, the days of this committee protecting the president at all costs are over. They're over. Before I close, I want to comment about the scope of today's hearing. At the request of the House Intelligence Committee and my very good friend, Adam Schiff, Congressman Adam Schiff, the chairman, I intended over the objections of the ranking member of our committee to limit the scope of today's hearing to avoid questions about Russia. However, Mr. Cohen's written testimony, in his written testimony, he's made statements relating to Russia. And these are topics that we understand do not raise concern from the Department of Justice. So in fairness, to the ranking member and all committee members, we will not restrict questions relating to the witness's testimony or related questions he is willing to answer. Finally, I remind members that we will need to remain mindful of those areas where there are on ongoing uh, Department of Justice investigations. Those scoping limitations have not changed. Finally, and to Mr. Cohen, Martin Luther King, Mr. Cohen said some words that I leave with you today before you testify. He said, faith is taking the first step, even when you can't see the whole staircase. There comes a time when silence becomes betrayal. Our lives begin to end. Today we become silent about things that truly matter. In the end, he says, 
we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of 